Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, LinkedIn, and good afternoon, YouTube. Um, so, welcome to uh, this new episode of Unleash Your Green Gorilla, um, this series of lives uh, that I'm doing. I'm Virginia Cinquemani, I'm the director and founder of Green Gorilla Consultants LTD, which is a training and coaching company focused on sustainability professionals. So, Today, we're going to talk about how do I become a sustainability professional? So what do you need to do in order to, um, you know, to start this career? Maybe you are a graduate and you study sustainability, but you are thinking, OK, now what? Maybe um, or maybe you're changing career. Maybe you're a bit more of a mature person. Um, you realize you know sustainability is part of your value set, so you want to contribute. So how do you enter this complex, complex world of sustainability? So this is what we're going to talk about today. But um, please feel free to uh, pop uh, your, you know, your comments, your questions in the chat, because I'm going to have a look uh, now and then uh, to answer your questions live as well. So let me start. So let me start from me. So what is my story? Um, in a way, it's quite typical. I studied architecture. A long time ago now uh, over a couple of decades ago and there wasn't such a thing as sustainability back then or what or well there was but there weren't any courses that were focused on sustainability so the way i learned about it was through some illuminated teachers or some people that i admire uh, people that um, were real pioneers back then so we're talking yeah over 20 years ago so it was a bit of a, a weird, you know, <laughs> strange uh, way of, you know, dealing with architecture, thinking about, you know, these hippie um, houses made of mud with a garden roof, blah, blah, blah. OK, so at that time, it was pretty weird. Um, but of course, I started working as a normal architect. So nothing, uh, you know, nothing wrong there um but at one point i realized architecture per se um didn't respond to my questions so how do i make this world better how can i ensure people inside the buildings actually feel happy uh, to play work living there so obviously normal architecture, let's say typical architecture didn't respond to my needs. And so I started investigating. And anyway, long story short, I've done a master's uh, in energy efficient and sustainable building. And then I found a job at BRE, which is one of the leading research institutes on sustainability in buildings. And the rest is history. So and I've been I worked there for nearly 12 years. Um, I've done a lot of work in sustainability. I learned masses and, you know, and it was, you know, it's, it's a lifetime choice. Um, in a way, sustainability is part of my DNA. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine doing anything different. And thank you for the cheering in the chat. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Now, things now are slightly different. Oh, actually, let me tell the story of how I found the job of a BRE, because that's quite interesting for the time, of course. So I've done this master's and uh, I send BRE an email saying, I'm studying this course. Um, how do I become a sustainability consultant? So exactly what you were here today to learn. And they say, do you have a CV? And I say, yeah, of course I do. Send the CV. Do you want an interview? So I went for an interview and I got the job without basically asking for it. I was asking for advice. I thought I, I needed to do courses or whatever, and they would have given me that piece of advice. Um, but actually, I found a job. Now, that was serendipity, whatever, right person at the right time, call it whatever. Today, things are very different. Um, because sustainability is more of a buzzword for the good or the bad, because sometimes it becomes greenwashing. Uh, so everyone is sustainable now um, or want to be. Um, on the other hand, many industries haven't really caught up with it. 
still, the, the fact is lots and lots more people are interested in sustainability and lots and lots more people are qualified to become sustainability professionals. So there is more competition. Now, the other fact is that obviously 20 years on, uh, millennials, especially so younger people, um, younger than me anyway, uh, I'm borderline millennial, but not quite, um, are expected to work for, you know, not not to have a job for life. In my time so far, I worked for, you know, without considering obviously working in a Chinese restaurant, in a bar, whatever, in an Italian restaurant right at the beginning of my time in the UK, I actually worked for four different employers, including myself. So that's already a lot more than my parents have done, of course. Now, if you are a millennial, do you want to pop in the chat? How many employers do you expect to have in your lifetime? Just make a guess, because things obviously are slightly different, but there are some stats there. So do you want to just put a number in the chat and uh, tell me what you think? Considering there is a slight delay as well, I'm going to wait a few seconds before telling you. Um, and this is important, by the way, while I'm waiting for some answers. This is important because a job is not for life anymore. A direction is for life. So, okay, uh, Olivia says, I've already had four and I'm 19. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Maria says four or five. Okay, you're very optimistic there. Well, you know, if you, I mean, obviously we are generalizing here and we're talking averages. I'll probably have 10. Okay, I'll tell you what, the stats say you're going to have 14, 14. So someone says six or eight. You're going to have 14 different employers in your lifetime. And the thing is, it looks like an enormous amount, but think about how technology advances, how things change rapidly, how jobs appear and disappear quite quickly. Um, sorry, my cat has just jumped on here. Get down. Um, why is that important? Because what you need to focus on is your direction. It's not necessarily finding your job for life, but definitely understanding where you can use your strengths at the maximum possible potential and think about your next job. Because, as I said, things move quite quickly. So, for example, technology advances really rapidly. And especially in sustainability, we've got lots of work to do, lots of technology challenges, lots of uncertainty. And that means the sector and also, of course, the climate crisis. So the sector will advance very, very quickly. Climate crisis, I've already mentioned. Uh, legislation changes. We just heard here in the UK that the PM Boris Johnson has announced a 10 point strategy plan. He's investing peanuts in it, if you ask me, because it's four billion pounds. When I think he invested, yeah, 100 billion pounds into the high speed rail HS2. Mm. I mean, the challenges are huge, and he wants to um, invest in wind and hydrogen and nuclear and electric vehicle and public transport and cycling. Zero emission planes, da da da, and is investing four billion pounds. Okay, we'll see. Good luck, but at least it's something, all right. The thing is, legislation change. As we know, most countries now, well, a lot of countries, not most, but a lot of countries have signed to the Paris Agreement, zero carbon. The UK has a target of reaching zero carbon by 2050, which probably is too late, but anyway, we're gonna try. Um, so. Things change rapidly. Uh, also, for example, consider things like artificial intelligence. We don't know which jobs they're going to take away from us, which one we're going to mm, do, um, you know, stuff that at the moment we do and maybe tomorrow we won't because a robot will do it. Pandemics, right? They have changed the way we work dramatically in a very short space of time. All of this to say, we know that the world is moving slowly towards, well, in certain cases slowly, in certain cases very fast, towards zero carbon targets and towards a more sustainable outline and outlook. However, there is a big question mark around how, when, 
want? So lots and lots of questions. They say they're going to create a, through this 10 point plant 150,000 jobs. I think there could be a lot more. But anyway, you are in the right industry. That is good. You are in the right industry. It's just understanding what and where you can focus your attention. Now, let me look at the chat because there are quite interesting things. So first year, you're not as productive. For five years, you'll need to be adapting and learning. But surely we should only be working 50 years. Well, thing is, yeah, I mean, it, the, the, the bottom line of this introduction for me is really for you guys to understand that, that there are lots of uncertainties. So, so the number one skill you need to really master and hone is your resilience. You need to bounce back. You need to be able to be flexible. You need to think outside the box. And it's easier said than done, but it can be definitely cultivated. It's something that you can develop. Some of the older ones among us have developed it through life, but that doesn't mean that you can't develop it when you are at a younger age. Okay, because and it's when you try and adopt a growth mentality, when you know that setbacks are not the end of the world, even the worst things that happen in your life happen for a reason. If you try and see that, and if you try and see them as learning points instead of setbacks, then that's that's where you start developing your resilience and add the new tools to your toolbox. So that's literally your passport for the future, develop resilience. That's the first thing. The other thing is become more curious. So as part of resilience, which is one of the things we teach in the Green Gorilla uh, you know, framework, which is also included in my book, you develop your resilience and your flexibility also when you look for a job so at the moment i know lots of people are looking for a job some of them are my clients and it's heartbreaking to see how they get lots of rejections sometimes they don't get even a feedback um so you don't know what to work towards of course um and of course if you can ask for feedback when you get a rejection letter because again it's a learning point it's important for you to understand what you can do better next time but the other thing is try and look for so try and think outside the box look for jobs that are outside your geographical area i know you don't want to move perhaps unless you know if you have a family but at the moment everything is working from home and it will be pretty i think it, you know working from home is is here to stay especially when you look for a job as a consultant stuff that you can do, or an analyst the stuff that you can do online Probably companies have realized through this year of disruption that they can save a bunch of money not having offices. So they are going to reduce drastically the amount of offices. They're going to encourage working from home. So when you look for a job, even if it says, you know, it's based in London, Manchester, pa Paris or whatever, look, you know, apply for the job and then discuss the opportunity to work from home. Um, now, the other thing is, it's very, very important to understand your strengths and your transferable skills. And you hear this all the time. But do we actually do it? When we apply for a job, whatever that is, often we look, especially women. I don't know whether there are lots of men in here, but um, women usually, unless they tick every single box in a job description, they don't apply for it. Men throw themselves in even if they don't have all the characteristics that the employer is requiring. So, ladies, let's apply for jobs, even if you have 50% of the description, okay? Because the employer is trying to have, obviously, their ideal candidate, but there are lots of things, even if you come from a different industry, that you can definitely use again in working in sustainability. Um, so that's just the general rules. Just think outside the box. Do things that are slightly uncomfortable. But you never know. I mean, I was super lucky, okay? But at the same time, if I had today to reapply for a job, I would probably, you know, look whatever and for whatever is in my, in, you know, in my mind, in line with my values, because we're going to talk about that in a minute, because it's important to be flexible and have that, you know, extra uh, willingness to really get the job you want. Okay, so 
possibly okay i'm gonna do i'm gonna guess here that you are here because you have a passion for sustainability okay sustainability is like is like, like a vocation it's like being a doctor i suppose you know you're a doctor of the earth <laughs> and you're fellow humans so you really want to fix things you really want the world to go the way uh, you believe and needs to go for you is a no-brainer and that's absolutely fine the problem sometimes is that and probably this is why you 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 hearing me talking now what you do at the moment is not really in line with what you would like it to be so you're not possibly working in the right job um you don't share the same values as your employer or maybe you you lost your job and you want to try sustainability now it can be confusing uh, because there are so many different avenues in sustainability, starting from the environmental side, which is the obvious one, but there is also the social and the economic side of sustainability. So things like renewables, uh, waste, transport, food, fashion, social value, lobbying, uh, sustainable development, ESGs, compliance, materials, buildings, innovation, education you name it sustainability is in everything and that is encouraging because every company right now is thinking about incorporating sustainability sometimes they don't know <laughs> but the law is going to impose it on them for example i don't know if, again if you're in the uk you would know that the government from 2023 is going to require transparency and so uh, companies will need to declare their carbon emission. Now, who's going to do that? You need an officer, you need someone. I've heard that lots of councils in the UK are hiring for a climate change officer. So the jobs are going to be created. The point is, what do you want to do? Because the jobs that can be there, because again, every industry every potential avenue in the world will move towards that. I mean, I'm pretty pretty sure about this but like in a matchmaking app and you need to first understand what you want and what you bring to the table and have a clear idea of your ideal job yeah so who are you oopsie <laughs> who are you what do you want what do you bring to the table what are your strengths and what do you want? What is the ideal job for you right now? Okay, going back to, you know, the 14 employers on an average. What do you want to do next? And I know it's hard. Sometimes it's hard even to know, you know, maybe some of us have an idea of which industry they want to work in. Maybe because you studied, like I did, sustainability in, sorry, architecture. So for me, it was obvious to go into build environment sustainability. I wouldn't have considered that time food, but actually, again, going back to flexibility, if I was looking for a job right now, I would be looking in food versus energy versus fashion because my, I got transferable skills, okay? So the first step for you is to identify what are your skills and what are your strengths. And those are gonna allow you to do the job. Whatever, wherever you come from, you have skills and you have strengths. Skills, things you can do, strengths are your characteristics, you know, what makes you you. For example, you're a people person versus you are a number person or maybe uh, you are a good communicator or you can write perfectly well or, you you know, you love marketing and you can sell, you know, eyes to the uh, uh, <laughs> people in the North Pole, whatever. So that, those strengths and skills allow you to do the job. Second point, what are you passionate about? Uh, you want to do the job and that's your why. So the, your passion is going to drive you. That's your motivation. That's why you want to do the job. Finally, what are your values? So you will feel, you know, when you're, okay, let me explain that in a different way. When you work for an employer that doesn't share your own values, so for example, you are a sustainability person and you work for the oil and gas industry, and you might have found that job because you wanted to change the industry, but then you realize it's bigger than you and you get discouraged and you work in, you know, day in, day out in an industry that you really hate. These are your values adult with your employer's value. Often we'll leave a job because of value clashes. 
So it's really important, even if you never thought about it right now, to think what are your values. So, so let's recap, skills, strengths, passion, and values. These three are going to give you the roadmap, or four, I would say, skills and strengths. They're going to give you the roadmap to what you can do next. Okay, as I said, it's like a match, uh, match uh, uh, app, you know, um, matchmaking app. One question that I, I heard somewhere, I think it was in a TED talk, and I really love that. The question you should ask yourself is, what do you enjoy being good at? What do you enjoy being good at? So I often say, I'm really good at cleaning my bathroom, but I don't necessarily enjoy it. And often we do a job because we're good at it. However, we don't enjoy it. It doesn't make you happy. It doesn't make you fulfilled. So think again in terms of what do you enjoy being good at? And of course, this needs to match with what the world needs and you're ready to pay for. And here I'm mentioning Aikigai, which is this Japanese concept, which means a reason for being. And... Um, it's effectively the perfect sweet spot between what you're good at, what you love doing, what the world is ready to pay, and what the world needs. When you find these four together, then you are in the right job at the right time. Again, your next job, not necessarily your job for life. If Another thing about thinking about the next job instead of a job for life is that it puts less pressure on you, I think. If you relax a little bit and think, okay, this is what I'm going to do next, but God knows what I'm going to do in 10 years time. Or on the opposite, you might have a perfectly good idea what you want to do in 10 years time. Don't beat yourself up. You know, just think about the next step. The direction is that one, your next step, and then the next step, and then the next step. You might be lucky. You might find the perfect IG guy job and stay there for a decade or more. Uh, but, you know, chances are you're going to move on quickly, um, which is fine, so long as you have a direction, I'll say. Now, what do you need to do uh, practically? You need to focus on your technical skills, of course. And I got a question uh, in, the, in, in the event before, saying if there are any specific qualifications or experience or training that I need to transition to the sustainability domain. I would say no, because like I was saying before, you could be working in or wanting to work for, you know, renewable energy or food or, you know, it, the sky's the limit, right? Of course, every one of these industries will have its own technical um, stuff. I would say in general, you should be very well aware of what the issues are. So get um, literate in climate change, what is causing it, how the carbon cycle works, the links between uh, all the issues in the environment between, you know, biodiversity loss and uh, climate change and, you know, climate, climate crisis, um, acidification of the oceans, understand the links, understand the dynamics, understand what's happening. Think about the ethical element of it, modern slavery, why is a problem? Where does it happen? Um, you know, fast fashion, you know, all of these generic, very generic things. Maybe start from the SDGs. So try and understand how the sustainable development goals can address the issues. But first, you should know at least very well where the issues are, because we've all heard about climate change, but what is actually causing it? Is it, you know, what is it? Um, Spoiler alert is the, you know, the overpopulation which led to, to and actually the economic system we have that continuously wants to grow um, in, a, in a world and in a planet that is actually finite. And we're not allowing the earth to recharge itself quickly enough. So that's the thing. And we're pumping CO2 and other greenhouse gases. We are causing the warm, you know, the warming on the earth that causes biodiversity loss, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all a chain, guys. It's not silos thinking. So just get literate about the main issues, the micro issues. Uh, understand what the sustainable development goals are, because this is a fantastic framework that hopefully the world is going to embrace more and more in the future. 
And, uh, and of course, you know, any basic, okay, let me see, some good courses, a future learn, a Bath University, an extra unit. Okay, perfect. I'm sure there are plenty, I mean, I, I deliver as well a course on fundamentals of sustainability, get the basics right, okay? And then from there, understanding what your strengths are, what your passion lay, because, you know, some of us are really passionate about fashion. I have been passionate about passionate about um, uh, you know green architecture, sustainable architecture for a long time now, sixteen years, because I believe you know all in all it actually causes forty percent of carbon emissions globally. I think it's huge. So that's where my speciality lays. That's what I've learned uh, a bit by chance and a bit by intention uh, now you have because you are in a much more competitive world than when i was looking for my first sustainability job you need to be more intentional so i would say think about your technical skills start from the basics understand so you, you need to map it basically um but also think about your soft skills because it's been demonstrated they are as important if not more important than technical skills that's all we do at Bring Gorilla, by the way. So although, yeah, we deliver a, a fundamental sustainability uh, course, but, you know, everything is in there, basically. Uh, the framework that we have, which includes communication and handling change and selling sustainability, um, you know, handling difficult conversations with others, negotiating, uh, developing your resilience. All of these are soft skills that, that you really, really should focus on speaking in public because the more you are a good communicator the better you're gonna do in a world that is a bit crowded where you have to differentiate yourself and especially now that lots of university uh, universities are delivering a lot of sustainability courses you need to understand your usp your unique selling point what is it compared to your colleague the other one that has done your same university course what is your strengths? So skills is one thing, going back to what I was saying a minute ago, what are your strengths? What are you good at? Okay. And what you want to do, of course. Now, um, in terms of your values, oh, actually, let's go back to strengths because this is really, really important. You might know what they are, but I would say just to double check, for me, it was an eye opener. I've done one of these years ago now, um, an online test. It was the Gallup Strength Finder um, call, um, test, sorry, to find out my strengths. And when I saw them, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, I'm a learner. Do you know why? That's why I always research. That's why, I, you know, I can't sit still and I need to learn the next thing. And yeah, I'm a relator because I get really well along with people I already know, but I struggle sometimes to strike a conversation with a stranger. You know, that sort of thing make you understand better who you are. Now, the Gallup Strength Finder, uh, it's actually it's not free, but there is a free one which I found really nice, which is called High Five. So go Google, actually, Ecosia. <laughs> go on Ecosia and type um, High Five test or quiz and you will find strengths and then you will find uh, this little test which will give you your strengths which is a good starting point your values then uh, next point um list all the companies that have the same vision as you if you don't know where to start just try and think about what are your values what you believe in and think about all the companies that you know maybe use linkedin or again google or ecosia to look for those that have the same vision but be very careful of greenwashing because even exxon mobile right now is you know saying they're green and they're selling fossil fuels so there you go the main the main way of understanding whether a company website is telling the truth or the social media is to speak to people that work in there if you have an opportunity on LinkedIn to connect to people that work in the companies that you want, that you're interested in, speak to them, understand from the inside what these companies really believe in, whether it's just paying lip service to sustainability or whether it's a real, you know, genuine interest in sustainability. And what, another way of um, looking at that is perhaps a look at the B Corps. B Corp is the certification that certifies um, sustainability, sustainable companies. So, so maybe look for B Corps 
and see whether some of them are within the sector that you want to work in. Um, now, also think about um, other values, because it's not just about, you know, the environment and being ethical and recycling, whatever, waste. It's also about pay, benefits, flexibility, autonomy, work environment, uh, opportunities for personal development. Like I was saying before, sometimes, well, very often, we leave a company not because we don't like the job, but because we are at odds with their policies, for example, or their values, which include also these sort of things. So worth thinking about all of these elements before you apply for any job. Now, I would say put together a plan. Uh, so once you find your strengths, your values and everything, uh, one suggestion I have is to grow your personal brand. So once you really are sure about who you are, what you stand for, grow your personal brand. Go on LinkedIn, go on Instagram if that's where, you know, if you, for example, if you work in sustainable fashion or want to work in sustainable fashion, it is worth exploring Instagram, for example. For me, LinkedIn is my, <laughs> is my life, basically. I spend my whole life on LinkedIn. Um, and that's what I'm doing to grow my personal brand. I show up. Can you see my face? Today, I'm not feeling 100%, but here I am. You know, I'm building my personal brand. So try and focus on what you can show to the world, to share with the world. Show them that you know your stuff. Show them that at least you have a passion for it. Often we are stopped and by our own imposter syndrome. Just because you're new to the sector, that doesn't mean that you can't contribute to your views. Because you haven't got a specific qualification, for example, that doesn't mean that you can't have your opinion on something. And of course, you know, you can't pretend or you can't, you know, you can't say, you know, you can't lie and say, yeah, I'm an expert. Nobody is an expert, by the way, I don't think anyway. Um, because it's such a vast, vast world, sustainability. But of course, you know, in, in a little niche, maybe, you know, you find experts. The thing is, you are, for example, a young person, you are passionate, you are so, um, you know, you want to do this. So and you have, you bring in a fresh pair of eyes to the discussion. All dinosaurs like me and older people really need a fresh pair of eyes, they really need to see the world from a different point of view, from a different perspective. So never discount your opinion, never discount the fact that you are passionate about this. And maybe because you, you know, you, you read the social media, um, you get interested, you learn in different ways that is not a university course. That doesn't mean that you don't know anything. Maybe you know more than what you think you do. OK, so start from a curiosity point of view and from a fresh perspective point of view when you share your ideas on LinkedIn, for example, on Instagram or in other places. Uh, you can share the data, for example. You know, you can do some research. Um, I've been sharing in the last few days some data around sustainable fashion. That's not my bag. However, I found really interesting data that I thought people had to know about the impact of sustainable fashion on, in the world in terms of CO2, in terms of water, etc. I'm not an expert, but I'm sharing some data. I'm sure others will perceive this as, you know, good data that they might, you know, make them think. And that's all I want to do. And I'm building my personal brand. Okay. The other thing in terms of understanding what you want to do, and this is a tool that I use all the time with my coaching clients, is uh, mind mapping. Mind mapping allows you to think deeper than just, you know, the uh, superficial level. Um, Mind mapping allows you to really think about all the different options you could have. It's like a brain dump. It's almost like you switch off your rational brain and you dig deep into the subconscious and you come up with lots of ideas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. So I would say absolutely explore my mapping to understand the options you have. Coaching, of course, I'm a coach. I have to say that. 
coaching is great because it's a great tool because it helps you to think but also mentoring so someone who has been already in the industry and is willing to share their wisdom people that work in the uh, you know in, in the industry that you want to get into fantastic way to access information that otherwise will take you a long time to access networking now i know at the moment it's so difficult but there are plenty of really good networking events going on as you probably know i'm the hub lead for uh, women in sustainability hard for share we are hosting an event for example on fast fashion on tuesday it's going to be a fantastic event one of the big elements is networking so take advantage of this without moving from home which you know you might not like right now but actually you can still network meaningfully with other people that are like minded um what else maybe you want to join a professional body membership like aima in the uk um if you are a sustainability professional or even a student you can get you know a membership for students and for graduates and that will allow you to access a lot of resources, webinars, materials of, of some sort, networking events, all of this. The more you connect with the world that you want to enter with in, the more the chances that these people are going to think about you when they are looking for someone or maybe they can signpost you, um, you know, a job that they heard. Um, so speak to people talk to people uh, stay in touch with them is a really good point i think to uh, to start this adventure um what else try and map your skills as well uh, again the aima website has what is called a um, aima skills map see what you got in there and what you're missing and perhaps if you want to get extra training see whether you know uh, you can find out from that mapping um for me as i said you know depends very much on your industry so long as you know the basics of sustainability then soft skills what else another thing uh show your passion so lots of i always suggest especially if you're a graduate to, to start volunteering for a cause that you really uh, are interested in a because you're going to meet new people b because you're going to contribute to something that is meaningful to you c uh because you never know really and it shows your passion it shows you know between someone who's just qualified and it doesn't have that passion and it doesn't have that interest and it doesn't volunteer perhaps you will make a difference even if you don't have extensive experience then you can try and apply for internship, graduate schemes. Uh, but the important thing is whatever job you apply for, follow up. I see lots of people failing in that point. They get shy. Once they have applied, they don't hear from them, forgotten. The thing is, right now, companies might be receiving a lot of applications. So again, is the survival of the fittest. Call them pester them i remember getting my first system um, sorry architecture job by showing up at the architect door that i wanted to work for four times in the space of two months the poor guy was so tired of seeing me that at the fourth time he said okay come and work with us <laughs> i really got him you know because he was tired of uh, me knocking on his door anyway so you need to be again resilient uh, don't rule out self-employment because even if you're young, even if you've got you know less experience, that doesn't mean that you can't partner up with someone who got more more experience. Again, mapping your strengths will make you understand what is you that you're really good at that you want to do. Maybe you know give uh, other roles to other people, put together your brains, and create something beautiful. You could do that. Ideally, you should try different things before you actually settle for something. But the quickest way to do that, as I said before, is speaking to people. If you talk to people that work in different industries or work at different levels in the same industry, um, it's a good way of getting a feel for um, what you could do and whether you will fit within that particular company or industry. Finally, finally, keep your knowledge up to date. Um, 
technical skills are important, but if I stayed with my technical experience and knowledge from 2006 when I did my master's, right now I wouldn't have done anything. Um, like, you know, back then, a solar panel had a 100 year payback. Uh, now it's so much shorter, it's less than 10 years. So you need to keep your knowledge up to date. One easy way of doing that is obviously LinkedIn. But also set your Google uh, for to give you news that are re relevant to the environment, sustainability, and the industry you're interested in. Or follow EDI or ED, actually E D I E, which has a fantastic choice of sustainability news uh, almost on a daily basis. So to sum up, discover yourself, your strengths, your your passion, your skills. Um, everything that make you, your values, everything make you, you. Grow your personal brand and set some goals and also explore different options, talking to people, mind mapping, etc. And then ex execute the plan, execute the plan. Make sure you follow up, make sure you spend some time growing and following your dreams. Okay, I have a free crib sheet that I can share with you if you want it. It's on the Green Gorilla website, so thegreengorilla.co.uk. You can download it. I think it's called uh, How Do I Become a Sustainability Professional? You'll find it in the resource downloads. So all the stuff that I spoke about today, you will find it nicely in a crib sheet that you can take away. And of course, if you need further help, if you need a coach, if you need further training, we're here to help you. Now, three minutes of questions. Do you have any questions for me on all this stuff? And I'll drink a little bit because this is thirsty work. What did you think? Is it a good overview? Do you think, you know, is there any particular takeaways, something that strikes you? something that you need to um you know any comments and i know there is always a little delay uh i'll go through the previous ones as well okay for example someone commented love job it's not for life but direction is absolutely i think the more and, and something strange you know when you know you might believe in these things or not but when you set your intention in your heart into something the universe conspired to help you there. So anyway, I believe in these things. You might not, but do you recommend searching out to people on LinkedIn email? Reaching out, sorry, reaching out to people on LinkedIn email. Depending on what you want to do, I would say um, if you ask for advice, 90% of people will want to help. So, uh, Sylvie, um, so if you want to use LinkedIn email, I wouldn't, to be fair, I wouldn't invest in premium but you can connect to people if you're not connected to them and then you have 300 words, sorry, 300 characters that you can use. You can write a mini message to say, look, I'm looking for advice. I'm new to the industry. I help people all the time that way. I'll give them some you know, nuggets of uh, wisdom, if I can call that, You know, but my knowledge, my experience. So I think if you approach them that way, that's, that's quite valid. If there is a job um, open, um, the mind will respond to you if you are asking directly to you know to apply for a job, but obviously you know follow the channels. Um, I'd say yeah, LinkedIn email is a fantastic tool, um, and generally if you ask for advice, people are happy to help. Any comments on Great Reset? Do you mean the you know the new you know whatever we're gonna do? So Jonathan, uh, whatever you, we're gonna do after uh, the pandemic. Is that what it is? Because to be fair, it's also up in the air that my only advice would be to develop your resilience. That's it. You know, keep on insisting. Uh, be a stubborn optimist. I talked about stubborn optimism a couple of weeks ago. You need to believe in this. The more you positive about it and i know that lots of people are really beaten up by the pandemic the situation we're all suffering at different degrees of course some people have lost lost loves one loved ones sorry um but we you know we need to react the thing is if we're passive nothing is going to happen the world is again it's survival of the fittest you have to arm yourself of 
good uh, uh, you know good intentions and uh, and your positivity uh wef plan yeah i think this is what you meant right um it's it's just very hard it's just harder to see where the world is going uh, at the moment to be fair lots of good news for example with the american new president who wanted to focus on climate change you noticed how boris johnson has done that immediately after so the world is moving together that's the thing is the systems that are working together one side of the atlantic to the other is all working towards the same goal so things will accelerate for all of us in sustainability but we need to be ready to be flexible and and jump at the opportunities so get the basic right uh get the you know your sustainability basic knowledge right focus on what you want to do what you're passionate for what you can do explore and again yeah keep adaptable absolutely keep adaptable that's that's all i can say but again if you need a thinking partner i'm here <laughs> and uh, yeah any other questions if you've got any other questions but i might go back to the chat later again because it's a bit slow to react um if there are other questions i will answer uh directly but yeah oh okay another one <laughs> i'm a student of sustainability management at the indian institute of forest management i have a background in engineering go into a particular field because i'm into it only question in my mind is between choosing the career in consultants and csr can you share your insight on my dilemma it depends very much on you my friend rajesh um they're both equally valid they're both equally noble let's say you know in terms of contributing to sustainability and to a better world csr sometimes is paying lip service that's the only thing i can say sometimes you know companies just stick a box okay we got csr at the same time also in consultancy sometimes find you know some clients are not really interested and they do say for example a certification a sustainability certification just because they have to do it it depends very much on the person you are whether you like working with people whether you like working with um uh, policies because that's obviously you know compliance which is more csr it depends um and i haven't got you know a straight answer in that sense it's very much about you what you like doing what you're best at and uh, but they're both you know beautiful careers if you if you ask me sorry no <laughs> maybe not very helpful but i would say if you do a little bit to the work that i uh, that, that i said before in terms of really thinking about your strengths your skills your values your passions maybe that's the answer that you're looking for okay guys time is up uh thank you so much for joining me today i hope it was useful uh as i said you got a creep sheet that you can download from the website sign up for the newsletter as you're there <laughs> so you learn more about events that are uh, we're doing a green gorilla and other interesting things lots of resources on the website as well videos and yeah if you need uh, anything just let me know i'm here and hopefully i will see you all in the next uh, live video so have a great afternoon and uh, we'll see you soon Bye.